Hey everyone, I am Nintendo Robojans from Nintendo Prime. We got a couple big stories for you here uh, related to Nintendo. We're talking some Shintura Furukawa talking about the future of the Switch platform and potentially some hinting towards a Switch Pro, which he's never outright denied exists, by the way. He's just talked about how, like, we ain't doing this soon which soon can mean many different things. Also, you know, we might as well speculate a little bit on a possible Nintendo Direct next week and why people are starting to put out there that it's going to happen. Now, before we get into that, hey, we are giving away a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card. Uh, it is gonna be based in North America. However, Switch is region free, baby. You can use this anywhere. So the giveaway is open worldwide. To enter, head down to the description or to the pinned comment. Also, you know what? I am so appreciative of your guys' support uh, and all of you guys watching my video and, and and just the positive encouragement I get most of the time, both in my weight loss journey and just in life in general. So I actually am going to put out a little arbitrary goal out there. Uh, and if we hit it, I'm going to do something special for next month. So if we can hit somehow between now and the end of this month before March 1st hit 65,000, that's just like, you know, 1,900 or so, uh, more subscribers on the channel. If we can hit 65,000 subs by the beginning of March 1st, I will do an extra special giveaway next month. Uh, that's, that's just something that I, I I've been wanting to do for a while for you guys and have a, a larger number of winners. Uh, it's just something that. Um, I, I don't want to explain what that giveaway is just yet because the details are still being worked out, but it's only going to happen that giveaway in March if we hit 65,000 subs. Also, let's try to get like 500 likes on this video. I know we can do it. Go down, hit that like button, and let's get into this. So, uh, first up, we have Shintura Furukawa. Let's just get right into the Switch stuff, uh, right into what he has to say because he was asked in an interview with Nikkei and, uh, if you guys have been following my channel for a long time, you know that Nikkei is one of the most popular publications uh, in Japan, and they do actually frequently talk with Nintendo along with having their own inside sources. Uh, Nikkei's in the past already reported about uh, new Switch hardware and uh, Switch Pro type stuff happening at manufacturing. So of course they're gonna ask Nintendo about it. So let's get into this interview. So this was uh, translated over at Nintendo Everything. A uh, great little website. I actually, uh, full disclosure, used to work for them a little bit back in the day. Uh, so, here's the interview. Uh, Nikkei asked Shintura Furukawa, looking back on the DS and Wii, those systems peaked about four years into their life cycle. How is the Switch shaping up so far? Because we're, we're basically in the fourth year of the life cycle right now. Uh, as the Switch enters its fifth year, so you think about 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, that's the way they're counting it. Uh, it's, it's technically getting into that fifth year. Uh, it says, it's very important to us that customers continue to enjoy playing their Switch. This includes the Switch owners who bought the console at launch all the way through to those who bought it with recent releases like Animal Crossing. I wish you would have mentioned Mario, but it is what it is. Uh, it's about providing new gameplay experiences for all Switch owners. We need to keep in mind that the console base will continue to expand as well as the types of games that have already been released for the system. Then they say, so if you wanted to, you could take steps to extend this, the hardware's life cycle. You see that they're, they're, they're kind of easing him in to try to say something here. And he says, right. I always say that the Switch is around the middle stage of its life cycle. Anyway, the middle stage. All right. We'll comment on that in a moment. Uh, we're able to offer a wide variety of different games because the Switch is both a home and portable console. But there's so much more that could still be done in the coming years. And then they say, do you develop consoles with a target time period in mind? So, you know, Nintendo has traditionally released systems every four, five, six, usually five or six years, six being the max, then uh, they release a new system. So there has been some consistency to this. Shintura Furukawa says, we never consider when to release consoles, but we're always doing technical and market research. Our hardware and software teams work in the same building. Uh, constantly communicating and thinking of new ways to have fun even when developing one specific piece of hardware there are so many hurdles to jump through over several years that the reality of it is we never really stop in the end the thing that makes an idea a reality is whether we could offer a new experience or not so what's interesting here is considering that one he says the switch is like just you know entering like it's midway point entering five years that means 
while they're not considering a timetable for when like the, the replacement system is going to come when you think that they consider the switches at its midway point that figure they, they think it's got like another four years 2025 i mean nintendo's not really planning to replace switch for four years we're looking at 2024 2025 which is way further out than many of us were thinking for a possible successor to switch how the hell is nintendo going to make it that far with tech from 2015 the answer is they're not as Shintura Furukawa explained, they never stop working on new hardware. Never. A new system comes out, they're already working on what's next, which is probably where a lot of the rumors and speculation end up coming from, because we've had rumors about the Switch Pro dating back to before the Switch even came out. So, obviously, they were working on new tech. We know about this supposed 10-year contract, which could coincide with how long the Switch is on the market. Hey, Switch is on the market for as long as that contract exists with NVIDIA. But also, NVIDIA's got some really cool tech out there that Nintendo's not using yet. They got way better mobile chips, way better technology that could release. Obviously, DLSS 2.0. We've talked all about this stuff in the past, what the Switch Pro could be versus what it probably will be versus what we hope it will be, right? Like, it, it, it's, it's very interesting, but... What I find more fascinating is that Nintendo has all of these contracts in place. Contracts with IGZO displays. Factually, publicly stated contract with IGZO display, despite not having a single IGZO display in any of the current Switch offerings. Uh, you know, building a new factory with Sharp, mm, a company that happens to work with IGZO displays. Like, Nintendo is constantly doing things that suggest there is new hardware on the horizon. But then they're also saying, hey, look, the current Switch is selling so well, we don't want to slip up and say anything that's going to make people go, mm, maybe I shouldn't buy that Mario Red Switch right now. Mm, maybe I should wait. Mm, should I get a Switch Lite or is the Switch Pro almost here? Or like, I don't know, I really want to play Animal Crossing, but maybe I should just wait because Switch Pro is about to drop. Like, Nintendo doesn't want people to stop buying Switch. They want a seamless transition from the current hardware of Switch Lite and Nintendo Switch into a Pro model. The fact that he says it's at the midway point means there's a hardware refresh coming. No system has ever lasted that long without a refresh. Even the PlayStation 2 ended up with a slim model. There is no... Now, you could say, well, the slim model is the light, right? But let's just be realistic, all right? We live in a world where if hardware like platforms are going to exist for the longest period a hardware platform has ever been fully relevant for, then there's going to be a major change usually around the midway point of that system and that major change is often a big leap forward take game boy yeah we got the game boy pocket but what really extended the life of game boy was when game boy color came out think about it with game boy advance what really extended the life of the game boy advance game boy advance sp backlit screen clamshell design right what really helped the 3ds you know, 3DS was doing all right, but what really exploded it when the new Nintendo 3DS XL came out, a more powerful piece of hardware. So what I'm trying to say here is there's a history here. There's a history here. Obviously, we could look at PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and what they did at their mid-gen refreshes, and they were only on the market for a standard console cycle, and they still did those mid-gen refreshes. Nintendo's looking to be on the market for longer than a standard console cycle. They're looking at eight to 10 years. So if you're going to consider 8 to 10 years on the market, you're not going to keep doing that with your flagship Switch, still relying on technology from 2015 when you're looking at possibly not releasing a new platform until a decade later. There's going to be a revision. There's going to be a refresh. There's going to be something in there that's beyond just a smaller, sleeker package like the Switch Lite. And obviously, that's the Switch Pro. And I think more than ever, with this statement from Furukawa, re-igniting the fact that Nintendo thinks the Switch is nowhere near done. That there's going to be a new model coming out. And Nintendo's not going to mention that new model Switch, that Switch Pro, until maybe even a month before release. Now why? Because they don't want to stop the Switch's momentum for everyone to wait for that Pro model. They don't want to talk about it now, have it not come out until winter, and everyone just stops buying Switches waiting for that. They know what happens in the marketplace when new technology is announced. People stop buying the current waiting for the new. Example, new iPhone gets announced. Guess what happens to iPhone sales the moment a new iPhone is announced? 
Why do you think they wait till like the latest possible moment to talk about a new iPhone? Why do you think Samsung waits for the latest possible moment to talk about the new Note or the new Galaxy phone? Because they know what happens to sales of the current the moment that happens. People are going to stop buying the current and just put on their waiting game for the new one. So here's the thing. I think Switch Pro is coming this year. I think it's actually going to end up launching this holiday. I wanted it to launch this summer. But more and more, I think Nintendo is going to ride out the Switch as it is until winter. And they're going to use the holiday period as a new hardware launch. And they're going to try to bank up. Like I actually think Switch Pro is in mass manufacturing right now. I think they have at least one of their Switch manufacturing lines dedicated to making Switch Pros right now. They are preparing for a winter launch. There has been rumors about it, reports about it from the manufacturing line that they've already been doing this since late last year. And yeah, they're not going to forget to make the current Switch. So they're making the current Switch to meet demand, but they're going to be pumping out that new hardware, I think, by the end of this year. So I expect them to announce something in September or October to release in November. And they're going to launch it alongside something whether it's a new Pokemon game, whether it's Breath of the Wild 2 as, a, as an end-of-year capper for them. I don't know, but they're going to launch it as, beside some sort of major game. And it would be really, really neat to see it launch aside Breath of the Wild 2. And it's funny that I was referencing uh, this because I think there's going to be a Nintendo Direct soon. Now, personally, I'm not banking on one till next month. But some people are pointing to the February 21st date because February 21st, 1985... All right, that was the release of The Legend of Zelda on the on the uh, Famicom out in Japan, right? That is when the world was introduced to Link, Zelda, Ganon, all that jazz, right? That is the big 35th anniversary of Zelda. Well, here's the thing. When you look at that date, all right, I personally, six days from now, I personally don't think they're going to do a direct that day. Why? Because the Pokemon company is celebrating the 25th anniversary of Pokemon this month. I don't think Nintendo is going to run two celebrations like that, two massive announcements over the top of each other in February. I just don't see Nintendo being like, look, the Pokemon company is doing its thing. We're going to also talk about Zelda. Granted, as a fan, that's awesome. Look at all this amazing news we have for Nintendo platforms. But also, hmm. Do we really need like a dick measuring contest between the Pokemon Company and Nintendo? I mean, I think Nintendo would probably win that contest, especially if Breath of the Wild 2 is involved in it, um, because it's widely considered um, one of the most anticipated games Nintendo's ever made. And then you have Pokemon Company, which kind of ebbs and flows whether people get excited or not. So I think Nintendo's going to let the Pokemon Company have their time in the sun. But I do think early March, first week or second week of March, Nintendo's going to drop a Zelda 35th anniversary direct. I think they're even going to call it a direct. And I guess maybe to make us feel like directs aren't dead yet. I don't know. Uh, and I don't know what they're going to announce. I presume we're going to see footage of Breath of the Wild 2. I don't know that it's coming this year. My prediction is it comes this holiday as a major holiday game. But I think that Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be shown. Beyond that, I don't know what they're going to do. Nintendo has celebrated the 30th anniversary of Fire Emblem, the 35th anniversary of Mario. They've done a few minor things for the 30th, 30th anniversary for a few other franchises here over the last year. Nintendo is celebrating, and they did a major celebration for Mario. You don't think they're going to do a major celebration for Zelda? That's practically, at this point, just as old as the Mario franchise? That is coming off its best-selling game ever released in the history of Remember, this is the company that was doing worldwide symphony tours for the 25th and 30th anniversary. They're not going to do it this time, although a virtual symphony concert would be something cool. I would like to see them do something like that, but come on. They're doing something. So I expect a Zelda Direct. I just don't think it's going to actually come on the 35th anniversary. If it does, awesome. I'll be excited. I'll be right there live streaming it and reacting with you guys. But I personally think they're going to let Pokemon have its time in the sun and then do the wait a couple weeks for Zelda. But hey, I'll take it next week. That's it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. Uh, it's been real. It's been fun. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.